In this example, we're going to solve this radical equation, and you'll notice, in fact, there are multiple square root expressions, and it does include a term outside as well. So we know that in order to solve these, we're going to have to end up squaring both sides twice. So let's go ahead and get started. We notice that this square root expression on the right is isolated already, so that's a good start. So let's go ahead and square both sides right now in an effort to get rid of this first square root expression on the right side. So on this right, we'll notice that those will cancel. However, on the left, we have the square of what we could consider a binomial. We have the square root expression minus one. So to square this, we could use our binomial formula. So we're gonna square the first term, which essentially just gets rid of the square root. Then we're gonna go double the product of the two. So it's negative one times this but we're gonna double that, so minus two. And so that's what we'll have. And then the last one squared, so plus one. And that will equal now the one minus nine X. And I will say this multiplication right here is the single most common place that students make mistakes. So be very careful uh, as you square this expression over here. If you have to put them side by side and not use a formula, then that's perfectly fine as well. Okay, so now we only have a single radical left. So let's go ahead and do a few things. I notice that I have this positive one, positive one, so I can automatically cancel those out. And let's subtract four and add two x to both sides. So we'll subtract four and add two x. And again, this is in an effort to get that second square root expression isolated. So we have the negative two, times the square root of four minus two x, and that's going to equal negative seven x minus four. Okay, a lot of negatives everywhere. So why don't we just go ahead and divide both sides by that negative, so we can cancel this negative, this negative, and this negative as well. And uh, that might be a little easier to work. I don't really know. We'll see how it turns out. So seven x plus four. Okay, so here's a consideration to make. We could really get this square root uh, expression all by itself by dividing everything by two, but since these numbers, uh, they're not both even, well, I'm not sure dividing by two is the best uh, course of action because this would be seven halves x plus two, and we're gonna have to square that. So maybe let's just go ahead and square it just the way that it is right here. So on this left side, we'll square the two and we'll square this, well, square root expression. So we'll have four times four minus two x. And then we're gonna square this binomial, so it'll be 49 x squared plus, and seven x times four is 28 x, but we have two of those, so 56 x, and then plus 16. Alrighty, so we'll distribute. So 16 minus 8x equals 49x squared plus 56x plus 16. Whew, this is actually not bad because these 16s will cancel and we can add 8x to both sides. And we'll have zero equals 49x squared plus 64x. Okay, this is not a bad place to be at all because we don't have to factor a trinomial. We're just gonna factor this using the greatest common factor, which just looks like x. So we'll pull that x out, so we'll have 49x plus 64. And we have these two factors. They're being multiplied together to give us this zero. So we're gonna use this zero property of multiplication and we're gonna set both of the factors equal to zero. Well, this first one is really nice because, well, x equals zero. The second one, not quite as nice. We'll have x equals negative 64 over 49. So one value is really nice and one value is kind of a, an awful looking fraction, but that's okay. But remember, we need to plug these values back into the original equation to ensure that they work and they're not extraneous solutions. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna rewrite this original equation. So we had the square root minus one equaling this square root. And let's plug in zero first. So it looks like four minus zero. Well, that'll just be the square root of four minus one. 
And if that's zero, that'll just be the square root of one. So it looks like two minus one equals one, one equals one. And I like that, that's nice. So we know that this x equals zero works. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and try this fraction here. So I will one more time rewrite this original equation and we will plug this negative 64 49ths in. Okay, so make some room here. So four minus, we'll say two over one times negative 64 over 49, that's all under the square root equals, um, see minus one equals this square root here. So one minus nine over one times negative 64 over 49. Whew, okay, got our work cut out for us. So the two negatives cancel. So it looks like I have four over one plus 128 over 49. That'll be under the radical minus one equals. And under this one, these negatives will cancel. So uh, one over one plus, and let's see, uh, nine times 64 should be 576 over 49. Okay, so let's get common denominators for everything. So four times 49 is 196. So 196 plus 128 all over 49, that's under the radical minus one. So this will be 49 plus 576 over 49, and that's under the radical. So 196 plus 128 should come out to be 324. And that is a perfect square, and 49 is a perfect square. Okay, well, maybe this might come out nicely. 49 plus 576, that's 625. That's a perfect square. Over that 49, that's a perfect square. Well, okay. So 18 sevenths minus 1, which will be 7 over 7, and 25 over 7. Well, it almost works. If this had been a plus right here, then it would have worked. But here we see 11 over 7 equals 25 over 7, and that's a no-go. So this negative 64 over 49 is going to be an extraneous solution. This will not work. So the only solution for this equation is going to be x equals 0. And here is the original equation. We started with multiple square root expressions as well as a term outside. So we had one isolated, we squared both sides. And again, this is the most common mistake students make is squaring uh, this side when there's a binomial. And then we isolated it again and squared again, had this nice polynomial. We were able to factor, had a couple of values, one worked and one did not. So here's that example, x equals zero.